Hello everyone, I'm Jan Chosen Bays, and I'd like to introduce a new mindfulness practice called Actively Practicing Gratitude. So the way you do this exercise is at least once a day, and you can pick your time. It could be before you fall asleep, it could be when you first wake up in the morning, or if you have a regular meditation practice, you could do it at the beginning of your meditation or at the end of your meditation practice. So at least once a day, you pick the time, you bring to mind five things, at least, that you are grateful for at that time. If more arise, that's fine. You could also think of keeping a gratitude uh, journal. Some people have done that. So whenever you summon these five or more things, you just jot them down in your gratitude journal. You could write a note that just says gratitude and put it wherever it's appropriate on your pillow if you're going to do this before you fall asleep or on your bathroom mirror if you're going to do it early in the day. Whatever helps you. Some of the discoveries that people have made doing this exercise are changes in the body and mind. For example, people sometimes say their body feels warmer or their body feels more relaxed. They've noticed the same thing happening in the mind, that the mind also becomes more relaxed. And sometimes the field of awareness expands. They've also discovered that if they're in a kind of cranky mood uh, and a little bit irritated, that doing gratitude practice can erase those cranky feelings and actually transform them into feelings of um, beneficence, um, even loving kindness. The other thing people have found is if they start with just five things they're grateful for, the first few might be a little difficult to summon up in your mind, but then somehow the works get going and then other things arise. So gratitude practice is an antidote to negative emotions, a very powerful antidote to negative emotions. And it can be deliberately summoned when you are having negative emotions and would like to transform them. Emotions are interesting in Buddhism because they're considered an epiphenomena, so they don't exist on their own. They're a combination of body sensations, what's called a feeling tone, which is a very mild emotion, like slightly positive, slightly negative, or neutral, and then thoughts, which we often call the story. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you wake up in the morning and maybe your body's achy and then your mind is also a little cranky. That would be the negative feeling tone. You just feel out of sorts. The mind then notices this and then begins to search around for the reason this is happening. Because the mind doesn't like things to happen randomly. The mind likes to be in control of what's happening. So it looks for a reason that you're feeling this way. And of course, you can always find a reason. The mind often searches in the past, let's say the day before, uh, or in the future, or what do I have to dread today uh, or tomorrow? So for example, the mind might think, oh yeah, remember yesterday that person just walked by me and they didn't say anything to me, they didn't greet me. Why was that? And then the mind begins thinking the story oh, maybe, it's, maybe they're mad at me for some reason. Is there anything of wrong I've done? Or um, maybe, maybe they're going to fire me, you know, and I don't even know it. Or maybe they're gossiping about me behind my back. And then you get this whole elaborate um, uh, story or play because it's, it's not real in your mind. And that, of course, reinforces the negative feeling tone, and suddenly you're feeling really badly, quite irritated or even angry. So the mind is trying to help us. The mind is trying to help us find reasons for things so that things are, don't seem to be happening randomly uh, or impermanence is not true. Um, and it's trying to actually help us feel more in control and therefore more happy. But when that happens, we actually feel more unhappy. One way to interrupt that pathway that I just described where you're descending into negative emotions is to drop into the pure sensations in the body. The body is always in the present moment. The difficult emotions feed on memories of the past or stories about the future. When we drop into the body, then the mind quiets. 
This is not always easy for people to do unless they, they've been meditating for quite a while to be able to just stop the chatter in the mind and drop into the sensations in the body. So if that doesn't work for you in terms of interrupting a negative chain of thoughts and emotions, then gratitude practice can be extremely useful and it can interrupt this descent into anger, irritation, uh, which can then carry on through the day and make your day very difficult. The research on the power of gratitude practice is quite robust. And one of the main researchers is Rob, Robert Emmons, who's from UC Davis, and he also works together with um, a researcher named Mike McCulloch from the University of Miami. And they did an interesting study where they divided their um, subjects into three groups. And the first group wrote every day uh, about what they were grateful for. So they did the practice I've just described. The second group wrote every day about things that had irritated them during the day. And the third group wrote about something neutral. And they continued this for 10 weeks. And at the end of 10 weeks, they found very dramatic changes. So the people who had done the gratitude practice had increased optimism about their life, increased sense of personal well-being. Uh, they had exercised more. They had had fewer doctor visits during that time. Um, they were much more likely to reach out and help other people who were in difficulty. Uh, so these changes are uh, pretty wonderful uh, with such a simple exercise. Uh, they also found that this worked with people who were ill. So this is important for medical people to know, or people who have uh, a chronic illness, that people who had neuromuscular dystrophy, which is a chronic progressive disease, if they did this gratitude practice every day for 10 weeks, they, they also um, felt all of these benefits, both physical benefits and um, mental emotional benefits. There is another uh, research project done by Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania. And he had people write personally, in their own handwriting, a letter thanking somebody who they felt had been beneficial to them but had not been adequately thanked. So they wrote the letter and then they had to deliver it personally. And the increase in the sense of well-being, all the things that I just described from the first research project, lasted much longer. In the first research project, the benefits lasted as long as you were doing the gratitude practice regularly. But in this research project, project, writing a letter of thanks to someone and delivering it to them, uh, the, the benefits lasted for months after you had done that action. So that might be something for you to include in gratitude practice. The research also shows that gratitude practice works well with couples if people uh, who are uh, in a partnered relationship regularly express gratitude to their partner. The relationship is much happier and goes much more smoothly. And it works in the work situation. So if a um, employer or a boss regularly and on purpose thanks the employees or the people they're working with for what they've done, then there are many benefits uh, in the workplace. So this is something we have to do intentionally. It's often very easy for us to focus on the negative uh, and because that's the thing we want to change. So that's the thing we address with our partner or our coworkers, or our employees. But the, the research shows that you have to make a sandwich of things that you're grateful for or compliments, true, true simple compliments, uh, around something that might have a negative feeling tone when it's presented to someone. In fact, the research on marriages shows, or, or long-term relationships shows, you need five positive uh, things that are uh, transmitted for one negative. So that's a lot to sum it up, but it works. So in summary, actively practicing gratitude is a non-pharmacological way to in improve your mood, to improve your physical well-being, uh, and it only has positive side effects as opposed to some of the medications that we use. So I strongly recommend that you first try it yourself, and then you can um, suggest it 
to people, let's say you're in the medical field, it might be something to uh, suggest to your patients. Ask them uh, as you're uh, greeting them or talking to them about whatever they've come in for. Ask them, are there three things in your life that you're grateful for? Because the medical encounter is often a negative, has some negative feeling tones around it. People are ill, they're worried. Uh, and you can change that a little bit or even change their sense of well-being right on the spot by asking them, are there, are there things, three things that you're grateful for in your life? And of course, you could apply that in the workplace too um, or if you're working with clients in any setting. So thank you very much and just think about how different the world would be if we all practiced gratitude every day.